Back in 2010, Plants vs. Zombies was one of the most popular mobile games at the time. And well, since the game was very popular, a lot of people wanted a sequel of it. And well, between June and July of 2010, some Chinese news website made an article about a fake Plants vs. Zombies 2 leak that they claimed had a bunch of new plants and zombies in it. And well, they also claimed that it would be released on August 2nd of 2010, which was clearly a lie as well the actual Plants vs. Zombies 2 was released in 2013. But yeah, even though these are all obviously fake plants and zombies, it's still overall pretty cool to look at them, and well, today I'm going to be giving you the description of all of them, and well, also about what they do. And well, keep in mind, some of these translations might be inaccurate as well, since it came from an old Chinese website that's only archived as well, the Chinese website doesn't actually exist anymore, some of the translations might be a little inaccurate. But yeah, starting off at the top of the article, we have the Dragon Chomper. Now the description says it has quick digesting except for machines and gargantuars and weaker zombies can be swallowed in groups. Now I honestly don't know what it means by quick digesting except for machines as well as no machines in plants versus zombies so yeah I don't really understand why it says that and I don't really understand what it means by that. It will, but also doesn't specify what weaker zombies mean but I'm probably guessing around from imp zombies to around conehead zombies as weaker zombies. But yeah, it also says it must be planted on a chomper and it has huge damage nearby and has moderate digest in time. But yeah, overall, it seems to just be a slightly more powerful version of the normal chomper and well, the design of it's overall pretty good. And well, I can honestly say this is one of the better plants on this website as well, the concept for it's overall pretty good. And well, next up is the stone nut. Now the description of this one says that it has a super protective shell, must be planted on tall nuts, unprecedented high resilience, and the eyes are bright and terrifying. So yeah, honestly, the description of it doesn't really tell us what it does that much, but it just seems to be a slightly more powerful version of the tall nut that takes slightly longer to eat. And well, for the design of this one, I don't really like it that much, honestly. As well, I don't really understand why it has a horn on it, also the eyes just kind of look, just kind of look a bit weird looking. And well, I honestly think that they could have made the design just a little better and gave it a bit of a bigger description. But yeah, overall, still definitely not the worst plant of this leak. And well, next up is Bursa. Now, the description of this plant says it has the ability to shoot slime to slow down zombies, and it says here that slime sticks to a group of zombies. All zombies will move forward at the speed of the slowest zombie among them. If any zombies are blocked by nuts, other zombies will also stop. So yeah, it seems I would combine a bunch of zombies together to probably make it easier to kill them all. And well, it also says here that the firing method is the same as the corn cannon, but this recovery speed is fast. And well, I'm guessing what it means by corn cannon is probably the cob cannon, except it just has a slightly faster recovery speed. And well, here's a picture of what it looks like in its ready state, which I'm guessing means that it's ready to shoot. And well, honestly, I don't really like how it looks in its ready state, and I much prefer the normal design of Bursa. And well, this plant is overall pretty popular, but not for the reason that you would probably think, as well, there was actually merchandise made for it. As well, a bootleg company named Linkson made a plush of it back in 2010, as well, Plants vs. Zombies plushes at the time were just extremely popular. So yeah, it's overall pretty cool, a fake plant from a bootleg company was actually made. But yeah, overall, Bursa doesn't really seem to be that bad of a plant, well, it's overall a pretty good concept. And well, next up is the Halloween Pumpkin. Now it says that it's a self-healing when not attacked and must be planted on pumpkins, has high toughness, and also has auto-healing plant armor. So yeah, it honestly seems to be a, just a slightly better version of the normal pumpkin and it's probably not even really that good. As well, the only really extra thing that it does is that it's slightly stronger and also it heals itself when it's not getting attacked. And well, for the design of the Halloween pumpkin, it's really not that different from the normal pumpkin as well, this Halloween pumpkin just looks slightly angrier. But yeah, overall, this probably has to be one of the laziest plants on the whole website. Next up is the Garlic Angel. Now, it says here that Holy Light Shines increases the toughness of all his plants. And well, it says here that zombies need to bite them 10 more times, which in my opinion is just way too overpowered. As well, if you place multiple of these Garlic Angels at the same time, that just kind of stacks on top of each other. So yeah, if you have 5 Garlic Angels, that takes an extra 50 bites. So yeah, mattering on the amount of sun that the garlic angel actually would cost, it would overall be a pretty powerful plant. And it also increases the frequency of sunlight falling from the sky. So yeah, this probably has to be one of the most powerful plants on this whole website as well, but it's overall really good as it makes it so that the plants could take a lot more damage than normal and you could also stack it on top of each other. 
So yeah, I'm honestly kind of glad that this plan was never actually released into an official Plants vs. Zombies game, because that would just be way too overpowered if you could make it so if you could just place five of these. But yeah, for the design, it overall seems to be pretty bland as well, but just gives it wings with a halo above it. And well, just like Bursa, there's also a Boo Lake plush made for it. Next up is the Thunder Mushroom. Now it says here that Thunder Mushrooms can attack at all enemies in a line and can destroy the enemy's metal objects. Which means that it's overall just a really powerful version of the Fume Shroom as well, but I'm guessing if a zombie had a screen door or something, it could instantly destroy it from what I could tell here. And well, that also means it could probably destroy a Buckethead zombie's bucket instantly, which is overall really powerful, especially because it could shoot across an entire lane. And well, it also says here it has normal damage except for large damage to machinery. And well, honestly, once again, I don't really know what it's referring to when it says large machinery. And well, for the design of the Thunder Mushroom, it overall looks pretty good. The only thing that's kind of weird about it is that it has lumps on the top of it, but besides that, the rest of the design overall looks pretty good. And well, next up we have the Babel Grass. Now this one has an extremely long description, so I'm definitely not going to be reading the entire thing as well. That would just take way too long. But yeah, I'm just going to give you a short summary of what it's actually saying throughout this description. So it seems that this plant could create waves in the water to impact the zombies, which means either drowning them with the waves or moving them backwards with the waves or just kind of slowing them down. You know, this plant is actually powered with coffee beans, so the more coffee beans that you give it, the more powerful it will be. So yeah, with zero coffee beans, this plant is overall really weak, but if you give it like five coffee beans, it'll basically insta-kill every zombie and shoot waves really quickly. So yeah, I could actually see this plant being added to a normal Plants vs. Zombies game as well, but it actually seems to be something that PopCat would come up with. And it was overall a pretty cool concept for a plant in my opinion, especially for this time. And well, I think it's overall pretty cool for a plant to be powered off coffee beans and have more powerful damage by the more th coffee beans that you give it. And well, the only thing that I don't really like about this plant is that I think the design could be a bit more unique, but besides that, the rest of the plant overall seems to be really good. Next up is the Big Pineapple. This plant has tough skin that could reflect damage from enemies. So I'm guessing that's what it means is that when a zombie bites it, it does the exact same amount of damage to the zombie of what it's doing to the plant. Which means that if a Gargantua actually hits this plant, it'll do the same amount of damage to the plant to the Gargantua. Which if you think about it, is overall really powerful as it can make it a lot easier to kill really strong zombies. And well, but also says that it has high toughness, meaning so that it has overall a really strong plant so it could continue getting hit over and over again. So yeah, it overall seems to just be a really powerful plant, mattering on which zombie is attacking it. Next up is the Vine Lift. Now, the description of this one says, Plants can be replaced on existing plants, but cannot be placed on nuts, cob cannons, or and when planted on sunflowers, sunflowers will not produce sunlight. So yeah, from what I could tell, this Vine Lift kind of just replaces the plants instantly. So let's say you plant a pea shooter and place a vine lift above it, it'll just instantly replace the pea shooter once it gets eaten. And well, honestly, I don't really get the purpose of this one, because well, instead of just waiting for this thing to plant it, you could just plant it yourself manually, so yeah, I don't really understand the purpose of this one. It also says the M zombie will directly attack the plants below and go straight through. So yeah, I honestly don't know what that's supposed to mean, and overall, it's kind of hard to tell when these translations just aren't the best. And well, next up is the Chinese bamboo. Now it says here, Bamboo Warriors from Zombie Free China can shoot sharp blades. It well, says it gives medium damage and features full screen attacks every 2 seconds. And well, I'm guessing what it means by full screen attacks is that it attacks every zombie on the board. Which is overall a really powerful thing that would overall be really good. And well, for the design of this one, I overall like it as with a lot of small designs on it and whoever drew this overall did a pretty good job with it. And well, I honestly have to say, whoever decided to make this entire league did a lot of work into drawing all the plants for it. As well, most of them overall look really nice. But yeah, if this plant was actually added into a Plants vs. Zombies game, it would overall be very powerful, especially if it could attack every zombie on the board. Next up is the Honeycomb Jar. Now it says that it can heal damaged plants around and increase sunlight yield by 20%. And it could only heal plants at a 3x3 radius and also has very strong repair ability. So yeah, it overall seems to just be a plant that could heal other plants, which is very similar to other plants that we already looked at in this video. And well, honestly, with the rest of the plants in this league, I don't really see why this one needs to exist in the first place, as well there was already a ton of plants earlier that just heal other plants. 
So yeah, overall, this one seems to be pretty weak, and the design for it overall looks pretty weird, and I don't really like it. I also don't really like the yellow color that they used for the beehive on this one as well, but overall just kind of looks weird. And I think for the design, they should have made it a slightly brighter yellow color to make it look just slightly better. But yeah, overall, throughout this leak, there's just been better plants to use for healing other plants. So yeah, overall, this one just doesn't really seem to have that much of use to it. And well, next up is the sniper shooter. Now it says that sniper shooters have the highest attack power and must be planted on a repeater. So this one seems to be just an upgraded variant of the repeater and while it overall looks pretty weird by the design of it. As well for some reason the repeater has a really long neck and also just has a whole barrel just sticking out of its mouth. But yeah this plant is extremely overpowered as well you can see here as it says that one strong peas equals 15 peas. Which means that for every single pea that this plant shoots is the equivalent to normal pea shooters 15 peas so yes overall just a very overpowered plant. As well, that means it could usually one-shot most of the zombies and mostly just two-shot. It could probably kill a gargantua and only a few peas, so yeah, it's overall just a very powerful plant. And it also says it has an attack frequency of 2.2 seconds and it says a strong peas when ignited is equivalent to 30 peas. So yeah, if 15 wasn't enough, you could actually have it be a damage up to 30 somehow. So yeah, overall, it's a really good thing that this plant was never added into an actual Plants vs. Zombies game as well, but it would basically ruin the game as you could just place these and just insta-kill every zombie. And well, next up is the Crystal Grass. Now, the description says 800 sun, can collect half screen sun every 5 seconds. And it also says it must be planted on marigolds and a good helper for absorbing sunlight. Now I don't really know what it means by 800 sun, I don't know if that means that this plant costs 800 sun or that it gives you 800 sun. But yeah, overall, it seems that this plant would overall be pretty good as well, but instead of manually collecting the sun, you could instead just kind of collect the sun instantly using this plant. But once again, especially if this plant costs 800 sun like it says there, this definitely would not be worth it as well, but instead of just waiting for this plant to collect the sun, you could just manually do it and not have to spend 800 sun. So yeah, once again, it doesn't really seem that this plant has much of a use. But I do overall like the design of it, and I do like the gem on top of it. But yeah, it wouldn't really have that much of a use since I have an actual Plants vs. Zombies game. And well, next up is the Hot Sunflower. Now it says I could burn zombies who eat it and also must be planted on sunflowers after which twin sunflowers cannot be planted. It also says that it gives the equivalent of 5 peas per second enough to resist the digging zombie. See, so yeah, instead of being an actual sunflower that produces sun, it just attacks zombies. And well, I honestly don't know why you would actually upgrade it as well, there's a lot better plants that you could use for this, especially because well, in the leak there's been other plants that you could eat and give damage to, such as the big pineapple, so yeah, it seems that this one doesn't really have that much of a use. Because well, it says nothing about actually collecting any extra sun, so yeah, it seems that it just kind of attacks zombies instead of producing actual sun like a sunflower is supposed to. So yeah, I don't really understand the use for this one, and I don't really think it would be that useful inside of an actual Plants vs. Zombies game. It will, the design of it is overall pretty lazy as well, but instead of just having petals, it just changes it with fire. And well, next up is the Gourd Boy. Now in the description it says it absorbs zombies in the interface at a rate of 1 every 7 seconds. And well, that doesn't really seem to be that useful honestly, as well, but if it only kills 1 zombie every 7 seconds, it doesn't really seem to be that good. As well, basically every single other plant in the game could kill a zombie before 7 seconds, so yeah, it doesn't really seem that this one would be much of a use. And well, making this plant even more useless, it says after getting eaten, the zombies that it ate will actually just come back out. So yeah, if another zombie eats this plant after it ate 3 zombies, the 3 zombies will just reappear. So yeah, honestly, I would have no idea why you would ever need to use this plant, especially because other plants in the leak are overall just really overpowered compared to this one, and this one doesn't really have much of a use. And well, I would definitely never use it, especially because, well, if it gets eaten, literally all the zombies that it ate just respawn. So yeah, honestly, I don't really understand the point of this one. But yeah, here's what it looks like when it's about to absorb a zombie and when it looks like normally. And well, honestly, the design of this one also looks pretty weird. So yeah, overall, it doesn't really seem to be that good of a plan at all. And well, next up is the Bush Buddha. Now this one it says it absorbs nutrients in the soil for the first 5 seconds, then uproot and move forward, attacking the enemies it encounters. So yeah, it seems that this plan would just kind of charge up and then kill every enemy in its lane. 
which overall seems pretty useful as if there's a lot of gargantuars in that one lane, you could just place this one, wait it to power up for 5 seconds, and well, we could just kind of kill all them. It doesn't really specify how much damage it does or anything, so I'm assuming it's just going to kill all the zombies instantly. But yeah, for the design of it, it overall looks kind of weird looking, especially because the design of it overall just kind of looks weird as it's literally just a tree with a face on it. And for some reason, it also has arms on it, so yeah, I don't really like the design of this one, but the concept of it, what it actually does overall is pretty good. And well, next up is the Hypno Puffs. Now it says that it must be placed on two hypno shrooms and can emit hypno bubbles which make sure there are four on the interface. And it says that zombies that touch the hypno bubbles will be charmed. So yeah, I honestly have no idea what this plan is actually supposed to do as the description of it doesn't really tell us. As well, but it says that the zombies will be charmed, whatever that means. I don't know if that means it's going to be hypnotized or something to attack other zombies, but yeah, this one doesn't really seem to have much of a use as well, but doesn't really tell us what it's used for. But I do kind of like the design of the Hypno Puffs as well, they overall look pretty cool. But yeah, honestly, I can't really tell if this is a good or bad plan as well, but it doesn't really tell us what it does. You know, next up is the Uncle Vine. Now, it actually tells us that it costs 75 sun, which is the only plan that actually tells us specifically how much sun it costs. And as well, on the Crystal Grass, it did say the 800 sun, but I didn't really specify is that what it give you, or that's what actually how much it costs. So yeah, I don't really know why they specified how much sun it costs, because, well, but it doesn't really say that for any other plan. And what it says here, that it's just an underground plan, just sticking out a head of and a few vines. And what it says here, that it has a few functions to it. First off, it'll automatically pull the first zombie to attack it into the ground and then disappear. And well, for the second function of it, once you click on the plant, it can pull another plant over and then disappear. Simply put it, it helps the plant change its position. And well, it says that it cannot be planted on flower pots or water lilies. So yeah, it seems that this plant actually has a few uses because, well, you can move plants around, which is overall pretty useful if there's a plant that you really need to keep about to get eaten, and it also kills zombies. So yeah, overall, for the use of it, it overall is a pretty good plant, but for its design, I don't really like it. And well, especially when it's transferring plants, it overall looks pretty strange. And well, for its normal design, when it's not doing anything, it overall looks fine. But I do think that they could have made it just slightly more unique. And well, next up is the Orchard. Now this has an instant effect on all the zombies in the interface when they drop coins when they explode. And well, it says that it has a 33% chance of dropping gold coins and a 67% chance of dropping silver coins. Now I'm assuming this happens when zombies die, but it does say when they explode. So I don't know if that's just like a translation error and that means when just zombies die or that means like literally when they explode like using a cherry bomb or something. Because no matter what it means by that, it could vary on how useful it is. As well, if it's every time that a zombie dies, that would overall be pretty good as well, we could actually rack up a good amount of coins using that. But if it's only every time a zombie explodes like using a cherry bomb, it wouldn't actually be that useful. But yeah, overall, it just seems to be a slightly more useful variant of the Marigold. And well, for the design of it, it overall looks pretty simplistic, and well, they could probably could have made it a bit more unique looking. And well, moving on to the final plant, we have the Radish Warrior. Now, just like the Uncle Vine, it actually tells us how much sun it'll cost, being 350 sun. Now, the description says a melee plant, the Radish Warrior stuns the zombies, and it results in a gaze. It can be planted on water lilies and it only takes up one space and has very high toughness. And it also says that it gives high damage equivalent to a watermelon. Attack frequency is every two seconds and can throw a radish once equivalent to a corn but only once. So yeah, it seems that this one's overall a pretty good plant that could deal a lot of damage. Especially because well, it actually has a pretty high attack frequency, especially because well, if it does high damage, you can actually kill zombies pretty fast. And well, I'm assuming when it says equivalent to a watermelon, it probably means a melon pole, and when it says equivalent to a corn, I'm probably guessing like a kernel pole. But yeah, the only thing really confusing about this plant is that it's called the Radish Warrior, except it kind of looks like a carrot. And well, it's also holding a carrot, so yeah, I don't really know why it's called a radish warrior when it's literally just a carrot, but yeah, besides that, the rest of the plant's overall really nice. Now, I do actually think that the design used for it is overall pretty good. And well, that was all the plants, but there's still another 16 zombies to look at and 3 extra things at the end, so yeah, let's move on to the zombies. Now, starting off with the first zombie, we have the arson zombie. Now, this zombie has a flamethrower attached to the back of it, and well, but it just burns plants in front of it. And well, the zombie is actually really powerful as it can one-shot basically any plant. 
And well, one really cool thing about this zombie is that it actually kind of was made into Plants vs. Zombies 2. Because as you know, in ancient Egypt, there's a torch zombie that does the exact same thing that this zombie would. So it's overall pretty cool that this league kind of did predict this zombie. And it seems that the only really difference between the two is that the arson zombie shoots fire slightly further. And well, to make this zombie slightly more fair to fight against, it also says that it moves slightly slower than a normal zombie would. But yeah, overall, the design of it overall looks pretty good, and well, it's pretty cool that they actually kind of predicted the torch zombie. Next up is the hula zombie. And well, this zombie is actually invincible to some plants as well, but it actually makes it so that squashes, cherry bombs, and other plants like those don't actually attack it. So yeah, if you place a squash in front of the hula zombie, it actually won't attack it. So yeah, that's really the only change it has compared to a normal zombie, as it has no extra health or anything like that. It just makes it invincible against cherry bombs, squashes, and other plants that like explode. And well, just like the Bursa and Garlic Angel, the same company Linkson made a plush for it. Next up is the Witch Zombie. Now this zombie flies over plants to make them fall asleep for around 5 seconds. And well, it works on every single plant except for walnuts and tall nuts for some reason. So yeah, the zombie would actually be pretty powerful if it wasn't an actual Plants vs. Zombies game, because well, we can make your plants fall asleep for 5 seconds, which could cause a lot of problems. And well, for the design of the witch zombie, for some reason the face is really weird looking, because for some reason it has his tongue sticking out, and also his teeth are all messed up. And well, just like the hula zombie, there was also a plush made for this one. Now next up is this really long zombie. Now I actually couldn't get an official name for this one because well for some reason every single translation translates it into a different name. So yeah I really have no idea what the actual name of this zombie is but I'm just going to call it the really long zombie because well you could obviously see why. And well but says that the zombie is overall really fast as it steps over all of your plants. And what makes this even worse is that it runs extra fast compared to a normal zombie so yeah I could just kind of step over all your plants and attack you. But one really good thing about it is that it has some weak health so it won't take too long to kill. But yeah this is overall a pretty interesting concept for a zombie as it would change the game a lot. And well for the design of the zombie overall it just looks really weird. Like I think they could have made the design just a lot better than just a really skinny looking zombie but yeah it overall looks pretty strange. Especially because it has a normal sized zombie head while the rest of the body is just really skinny so yeah it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Next up is the farmer zombie. Now the farmer zombie actually spawns zombie pea shooters. And well they spawn this grey looking pea shooter thing that has a very low attack damage. So yeah basically what it is is just a very weak version of the pea shooter. And well the farmer zombie would just kind of spawn these constantly until it died. So yeah it's overall pretty interesting that they made a whole nother plant that was actually zombie based. And well for the farmer zombie it has slightly better health because of the hat on it making it slightly stronger and also runs slightly faster. But yeah, overall, it was a pretty cool concept for a zombie to spawn in other plants that would attack your plants. Next up is the Brain Freeze Zombie. Now what this zombie does is that while it's swimming around, as soon as it starts eating a plant, it freezes everything in a 3x3 radius. And well, from then on, the plants will be frozen. It doesn't really specify how long the plants will be frozen for, just as they'll be frozen. And well, besides that, it just seems to be a normal duct tube zombie. As well, it says it has the same amount of health and it's also pretty slow. But yeah, overall, the zombie, if it was actually in an actual Plants vs. Zombies game, it would make things a lot harder if it continued freezing your plants, so yeah, it's overall a pretty cool concept. And well, for the design of it, I overall really like the design, they did a great job doing it. And I also like that it freezes the water around it, making it look like ice. And well, but I honestly have to say, this is one of the better design textures for this Plants vs. Zombies fake leak. Next up is the Ghost Zombie. Now the first thing that it says in the description it says ghostly zombies like ghosts are hard to hit. You know, but it actually doesn't specify what will kill it. As well but just says that it's hard to kill so yeah I don't really know what plants would be able to kill a ghost zombie especially because most things would just go through it. But yeah I guess we'll never know what actually would actually kill the zombie because well, they never really specified it in the description of it. But yeah it seems that the zombie would just spawn at random unexpected times so it would be pretty hard to kill. And well, besides that, it says that it has the exact same amount of health as a normal zombie, and it goes the exact same speed. So yeah, there's nothing really else it says about this ghost zombie, except that it would be pretty cool to tell us if there actually was a way to kill it as well, but it doesn't really specify anything. And well, for the design of it, it's just a normal zombie in a white coat, and well, it was kind of see-through. Next up is the Toxin Zombie. 
Now the zombie doesn't do anything until it dies and when it's killed it starts turning into the ground toxic waste. And while the toxic waste will slowly spread around a 3x3 radius killing any plants near it. And while you won't be able to place any plants in that area for around 50 seconds. So yeah overall once again a pretty cool concept for a zombie especially because it would be pretty cool if it was actually in a game as well but it would change the strategy of how you would play it. And what makes this zombie even worse is that it has really high toughness so yeah if you want to kill this zombie and get it killed really fast so it doesn't infect any of your plants you would actually have to do a lot to it. And well for the design of it I overall pretty much like the design well there isn't really anything I would change about it as well but overall looks pretty good. And well but overall I actually would say this is a pretty good concept for a zombie. Next up is the snow locust. Now I really don't know why this is in the zombie section or why you would even want to place this in the first place as well after you plant this plant each zombie has a 1% chance to make a zombie yeti appear when it dies. So yeah I guess if you wanted some extra gems and wanted to find a yeti zombie you could place this one to slightly increase your chances. But yeah it's overall just a really weird concept for a plant well, but also has a really weird design. Next up is the overwatch zombie. Now the zombie has a gong and when he hits the gong every single zombie on the board increases the speed by 33%. And well the zombie would definitely work well with all star zombies cause well since they already run fast if he hit the gong they would run extra fast. And well the zombie also has some extra health making it harder to kill except it does walk slightly slower than a normal zombie would. And well the only really thing that's really bad about the zombie is that he can't actually kill any plants he can just increase the speed of other zombies. And well once again this is overall a pretty good concept for a zombie as well but it would be pretty interesting to make every zombie go just slightly faster. And well the design of it is overall pretty simplistic but I still pretty much like it. Next up is the firecracker zombie. Now the zombie suddenly appears out of the sky just like a bungee zombie and you have 4 seconds to kill it until it explodes. So yeah if you kill the zombie within 4 seconds nothing happens but if you don't all the plants in a 3x3 radiance will explode. So yeah, overall this is just a really powerful version of the bungee zombie because well instead of just stealing one plant if it explodes it kills a ton of plants. So yeah once again I do actually really like the concept for the zombie and I think it would be pretty interesting to use in an actual plants vs zombies game. And well the firecracker zombie has the same amount of health as a normal zombie. So it probably honestly wouldn't be that hard to kill but it still makes the game just slightly more interesting if it was actually added. You know, the only thing that I don't really like about the zombie is that for some reason the hair on it just looks really weird. Like for some reason there's just a weird patch of hair in the middle of his head so yeah I don't really like that design of the zombie but besides that the rest of the zombies overall pretty good. Next up is the spear zombie. Now this is the exact same as a normal zombie as it has the exact same amount of health and the exact same amount of speed except it just kills zombies when it's slightly further away. So yeah with this zombie it kind of works the exact same as the arson zombie as well once you get close to a plant it just automatically kills it. So yeah I don't really see a use for this zombie as well but it basically works the exact same as the arson zombie that we looked at earlier. So yeah honestly this zombie doesn't really have much of a use as well but it's initially in the exact same league so yeah it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have basically two of the exact same zombies. And well for the design of the zombie is overall pretty basic as it just has a weird hat on it's holding a spear. Next up is the lion dance zombie. Now this is a costume that two zo separate zombies wear so yeah it makes it extra hard to kill and well but also has a lot of extra armor on it. You know, but it also runs extra fast so yeah this would just be a really challenging zombie to kill as well but it's overall really fast and has a lot of extra health. It will making the zombie even harder to counter when you kill it it actually explodes. So yeah overall this would be a pretty weird zombie to actually have in the game and it would also be extremely hard to deal with. Especially because every single time with this zombie spawns you would basically guarantee lose something as well, especially after you when you kill it it explodes. But yeah overall for the design of the zombie is a pretty interesting design and I actually pretty much like it. But it is pretty weird though that it has a weird lump on the back of it but besides that the rest of the zombie design overall looks pretty good. And well next up is the dragon dance zombies. Now this is the exact same as the last zombie that we looked at except just a lot harder to kill. As well this is just a huge team of zombies that the website doesn't actually tell you how many there are so yeah I don't really know how many there are but there just seems to be a lot by this picture that they made. And well once again just like the last one that we looked at it goes slightly faster than a normal zombie. And well it says that in the description it's one of the strongest zombies ever made so yeah it's probably extremely hard to kill and you probably won't be able to kill it easily. As well you'll individually have to kill every single zombie before it disappears so yeah it'd be very hard to do. 
It will, unlike the last one, when it's killed, it doesn't actually explode. So yeah, this one's probably actually slightly easier to deal with when it's dead. But yeah, overall, the zombie would just be extremely annoying to have in the game. And well, for the design of the dragon, it overall looks pretty good. And well, I do like how the people that drew this artwork of the dragon just copy and pasted the exact same thing over and over again to make it look really long. Now well, next up is the tennis zombie. Now this zombie actually can be hit by peas as well. When peas come towards it, it just hits it back. So yeah, just like the screen door zombie, the only really way to kill the zombie is with like a fume shroom or something. Because well, if you shoot peas at it, it'll just shoot right back at you. And well, the zombie also is slightly faster than a normal zombie and also slightly stronger. So yeah, the only way to kill the tennis zombie would be actually to use like a fume shroom or another plant that doesn't shoot peas. And well, that's it for all the zombies, except there are, there are three extra things in this league that I don't really know what they are. But at the bottom of the article, they have these three extra plants that they have. And I don't really know why they're not in the exact same place as the rest of the plants, and they're also in this really weird style, like the one you unlock a plant. So yeah, I don't know why they're like this, but yeah, it's overall pretty interesting that they're separated from basically everything else. But yeah, first off, we have the flower basin. Now this one's the exact same as a flower pot except you could put water plants in it. Now I actually think this is a really good concept because well we could actually place water plants outside of the water as well. We could just place flower pots on like a roof level and put a water plant in there. So yeah it's a pretty interesting concept. Especially because it would be pretty cool to have like cattails on like a roof level. And well the rest of the stats for this plant is the exact same as a normal flower pot. And well next up is the nail nut. Now this is the exact same as the normal tall nut except it has slightly better health and it kills zombies while they're eating it. Now this is a pretty weird concept for a plant as well but it's literally just a tall nut with nails sticking out of it. And honestly I don't know really why this plant would even exist in the first place in an actual Plants vs Zombies game as there's really no use for it. Especially because the description of it states that it doesn't really deal a lot of damage and is overall pretty weak. So yeah it just seems to be a weird variation of the tall nut that they made. And well, next up is the power garlic. And well, on the article, there's actually no description of this plant. And well, literally, all it says on the article is mysterious plant properties unknown. So yeah, not even the article knows what this plant even is. And well, the only thing that we really could go off of is by the screenshot of it. And well, the only thing that it really says is that it moves zombies back and then diverse them into other lanes. So yeah, I don't really know how that would be useful, but yeah, it's overall a pretty weird plant that not even the article tells us what it's about. And well, that's everything it says. There is a few extra stuff on the bottom telling you about Plants vs. Zombies 2 and how it'll be released and stuff, but that's not really important. As of literally everything that they said about it is just fake and made up. But yeah, overall, this is a pretty interesting article that has a bunch of really cool stuff on it. And I do gotta say, whoever made this article has a lot of dedication to make all this artwork and make up all these descriptions about these plants. So yeah, even though this is obviously fake, it's still overall a pretty interesting thing. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like and subscribe, and yeah, have a great day.